Well, hello YouTube. Welcome back to Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. Yes, I'm not going nowhere. I was just venting in that last video. I get tired of being the dancing chicken. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to do a review. Um, this just came up on a shop light that you buy at Walmart and this is my second light and both of them do exactly the same thing after so many months <laughs> um, this light was over top of the vise and it's a two tube light this one right here that plugs into the wall it's got a cord on it which is about the only thing useful on it because it's just it's junk uh, this is a let me get my magnifying glass light of america or lights of america model eight zero four five e dash w h i believe it's westinghouse but it, it might be just um lights of america and you get this at walmart and i think i paid like 9.99 for it it might have been more but the problem with this light is I bought the first one. Look, got dirt all over me. I bought the first one, and about two months later, it started flickering. And it wouldn't stop. Well, then I unplugged it. Thought, well, maybe I need to reset it or something. So, I mean, it was worth a try. I knew I was wasting my time. And uh, I unplugged it and then plugged it back up. And it was still flickering. Well, then there would be times you'd turn it off and turn it back on. It wouldn't even come on at all. So, here's the ballast that they have in it. A little old plastic thing. Looks like it's cheap. It ain't like the old ballast. And... Uh, so I went and bought another one, identical to it, thinking, well, maybe I just got a bad one. And I put this one up, and that was about six months ago. It might have been longer than that, maybe eight. This one lasted longer than the first one. Yesterday, I came out here to get the lathe ready for sale and because i had a guy coming to look at it and my light was flickering so i already knew time to just go on and put another one up so i had another one just like this one here that i put on that end so now i've got two matching lights and eventually i'm going to make a frame around them wooden frame it's just not top on my priority list so uh I'm in the middle of doing that, but I wanted to do a review on it and just let you guys know that, you know, don't waste your money on this light. Um, it's best to go LEDs, of course I can't afford them LED lights, so I just get the tube lights. Eventually I will go LEDs, but um, anyway. That's neither here nor there. Uh, so yes, I did sell the lathe. And yes, I did get the 800 out of it that I wanted. Now that I can deal with. Now I've got other people who want more of them. <laughs> I just don't know if I want to go through all that. Uh, 
that one was a nightmare. So, um, but anyway, that's not about the lady. This is about the uh, the light. So don't waste your money on this light. I'll put the uh, model number right here. So basically, the only thing this thing is worth is I could possibly take to save all the wiring out of this. Can't really save these ends because they're. Well, I guess you could save the ends and just put a regular uh, ballast in it, but you know, that's not why they sell them. They don't sell them so that you have to put a new ballast in it later on. They sell them that they're supposed to last. They don't last. So it's not like the old ballast where you had the big old ballast and uh, they lasted longer. Uh, this light here, I had one ballast smoke on it. But man, these are old lights. These things have been in use for a long time before I even got them. And they're still running strong. And I really like these four foot lights. Um, the four tube, four foot lights. And I'll show you what I got going on here. This is the light that I'm putting up. And it's just like that one over there. And I do have the cover for it. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, that was a guy calling me on that 109 lathe. I hated to tell him that it was sold, but it's sold. But anyway, back to this light. Uh, we took the 12 bolt out, and I'm going to move it. That's why I left it open right there. Uh, it was a little too close, so I'm going to just put that light somewhere else. Uh, I'll just cut me another hole right here and move out over here, something like that right there. Not that I even need it. Uh, so I'm only going to use two tubes, so I'm only going to be using one of these. So basically one of these ballasts will be just an extra for when, you know, if, I, if one catches or smokes on me like the last one did on that light. And uh, this will work. Uh, I've got some upcoming videos. I'm still working on. Uh, I'm still working on trying to get the parts to build the uh, air rifle. Uh, for now, though, until I can get all the parts to make the air rifle from scratch I'm just going to convert the uh, Benjamin Discovery that I have to a 243 uh, air rifle it's not going to be a 25 caliber it's not going to be a 30 caliber it's going to be a 243 so um, watch out for that um, that one I've almost got all the parts to do um, I have to build, there's, that's another video coming up, I've got to build a uh, resizer because I'm basically going to take the 25 caliber pellets and I'm just going to shrink them, I'm going to resize them. So i got to make a resizer for the 25 caliber pellets to make them fit the 243 barrel. Uh, the reason for that is because the 243 in a firearm, the bullets fit tighter in the barrel because the powder or the explosion in the barrel to push that uh, bullet out is way stronger and has a lot more pressure and has enough pressure to push that bullet through the rifling so it puts a deeper groove in the rifle area or the rifling area on the bullet and on an air rifle you're pushing it with air and it doesn't have enough I guess you would call it 
ass to push the pellet or the bullet out of the 243 barrel. So it's still a 243. It's just going I'm just shrinking the pellet so that it fits through the barrel or has the same pressure to push the pellet through the barrel as it would be if I was to push the 22 caliber bullet out of the 22 caliber air rifle barrel. If you understand what that means. Um, then I'm going to build a mold for to make my own pellets. Uh, I've already got the drill bit ready. Uh, I've got the steel which is one of these it's that solid steel that I bought to make the axle out of for my trailer and ended up not needing it so I ended up with this piece left over and I'm just going to use this and cut it in equal length uh, and then sandwich those together drill a hole in the center half on this side and half on the other side and make it so that it unbolts but that's another video uh, just I'm just letting you know that we got that video coming up and the, the resizer coming up uh, still got to work on the trailer it's just too cold outside to do anything uh, the parts that I need for the the air rifle I want to build is I got to find a piece of solid aluminum that is one inch thick, two inches wide, six inches long. I got to find a piece of uh, aluminum for that. That would be to, be, to build the breech. Um, I've got everything to make the bolt. Um, and then I got to come up with a air source. Um, that's going to be the most expensive part. Um, I may just go up here to the local metal getting place and go ahead and get me a piece of aluminum. Hell, I might be able to get a piece of scrap off of something. Uh, he might give me a deal. Um, like I said, the trailer, I got, I got more work to do on the trailer, and I'm thinking real serious about selling the trailer, uh, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but anyway, don't buy this light, it's junk, uh, unless you like replacing balances and replacing these lights, have at it. <laughs> but if you don't like doing that, don't buy it. Um, so, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by PayPal at bisonworkshop at gmail.com. You guys have a good one. Later.